Um, let's, there's been a the big scandal here in the UK, um, and this is the post office. I'm not sure whether I think uh, Sunak said this was the, the biggest stain on British history or something. Uh, I'm quite shocked he would go that far, but it was a travesty. And th- this is a different angle to this. Revealed how disgraced ex-post office chief Paula Venels nearly became the Bishop of London after being supported in her application by Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. Um, and of course, she oversaw the, the post office while these individuals who ran the post offices, um, actually the 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 IT system showed that they had been basically taking money and they had to make up the losses. And, and that's a travesty. Um, but it's interesting that actually she actually could have ended up in that. She might have actually done a better job. The Bishop of London, uh, the the woman in charge, isn't isn't the greatest. Um, uh, I know you've got no love for Welby. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Godfrey? Well, this throws up so many things, and I for long I, I don't often agree with Sunak, but I agree. This is a very very serious failure of our country and its institutions very serious and in my view it started with Blair this degradation so what have we got here we've got so many things here haven't we we've got um sub postmasters who have been screened and selected very carefully for their honesty Mm. and their place in the community so you were dealing with hundreds of people who by selection procedure, were fundamentally good people. And I'm sure we've, I've had personal friends who were uh, uh, sub postmasters and mistresses, uh, salt of the earth. And I won't be the only person that's saying that. And lots of us know that they were the salt of the earth. So, how is it that that could come about? That's point one. Point two is how could the judiciary? not maintain a fundamental principle of English law, which is a presumption of innocence. Mm. How could you sit on the bench and assume that the computer was right and the man in front of you with an impeccable background was lying and a crook? How could you assume that in so many cases? And, of course, the answer is to the, uh, the judiciary has been degraded. So the people sitting on the bench now are not proper people, they're political appointees. So you're getting a very low quality of judge or recorder or crown court judge or magistrate even. These are very poor quality people. They used to be drawn in the 1950s and up to the 1950s uh, from people who are either very good lawyers, uh, uh, proper members of the community, so on and so forth, very often with a war record of that generation, of course. Now you've got Every bit of flotsam and jetsam sitting on the bench, you've got quotas. You've got people there because, not because they were great lawyers, because they were friends of friends of somebody, or they fit a gender uh, a quota or, or, or an ethnic quota, all these sort of things. So you're not getting a meritocracy on the bench. That's fundamental. So this is the next thing. And who would know how, if you've got to choose before somebody with an impeccable record who is a postmaster and a machine, You choose the postmaster, not the machine. Machines are fallible. But here we are on the threshold of AI, artificial uh, intelligence, which isn't intelligence at all, as we all know, because we have to deal with it. Try phone the HMRC. Try and phone any institution. Your call is important to us. Uh, You're on hold. You're fifth in the queue because nobody employs people anymore. Uh, They've got a machine, and machines are desperately fallible. And this is the problem. So you have a corruption. Uh, Then you have, you bring it right on to the honor system. And I did a piece that's on my website with um, Sonia Poulton on this. We went right through the list nearly. And we picked out who's on the honors committee, who are on the honors committee who didn't see her name as being a wrong'un. This woman is a wrong'un. And did nobody on that committee go, just a minute, we can't give her a CBE. Do you know what she's responsible, where she is? Uh, But the list is full of people like that. Mm -hmm. Jobsworths, people who've been around, people who tick the boxes. Um, It would be no surprise if she had turned up as the Bishop of London if she's sponsored by Will, because he's another wrong'un. He's another wrong'un. 
so the whole country has been degraded, but this has actually <clears throat> thrown a light on the degradation of our institutions. <clears throat> and the only way that we can bounce back from this, the entire honours committee must be sacked. Mm. We must have a criminal investigation because there's a lot to do here. There's uh, non-disclosure. Uh, it, uh, and it needs to be taken apart. Non-disclosure, uh, perjury. All these things are in this mix. And of course, what will we have? Ha ha. We'll have another bloody inquiry, which will release all the information in 2030. Yeah. It's a piss take, isn't it? And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And you can't vote them out. It doesn't matter whether it's the big charities, government, the civil servants. We have no system of getting shot of them. Mm. Unless, of course, we have a look back at the French Revolution and start chopping a few heads off. I'm becoming more inclined to this solution day by day. Uh, as most of you know, my work is very heavily independently research-based. Uh, and I get my information from all over the world. It would help if you press the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, because the more subscribers I have, uh, the more likely it is that international uh, independent research institutes will share their material with me. It's most helpful, and then, of course, I'll automatically share it with you. Uh, so, surprise, won't cost you anything. Uh, thank you very much.